Total information awareness. It's a scary, it's a very Orwellian term, isn't it? It's actually a massive research project conducted by the Defense uh, Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA. They're the folks who actually funded uh, the early internet uh, as ARPA. Uh, and uh, TIA poses what many are describing as a huge threat to our civil liberties. Here to explain why from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Writer, technologist, Corey Doctorow. Good to have you, Corey. Good to be back. Thank you for Referrer Risk. Uh, thank you. It that, was my pleasure. <laughs> Megan picked that up New on her blog. Fun. And yeah, we spent yeah. our entire day going click, 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 click. <laughs> But these are more important uh, times, more important issues. When did uh, DARPA conceive of TIA, or did DARPA conceive of it? Uh, DARPA did a couple of years back, and they've, uh, they, what, what it's been is a whole bunch of different projects that have been ongoing, that have been sort of mooshed together under a new leadership with more budget and less oversight. And it's an anti-terrorist measure? Uh, nominally, it's an anti-terrorist measure. We like to think of it more as an anti-freedom measure. Uh, we like to think that terrorists can be caught without making America into a country that you wouldn't want to live in. Well, what, do they, what does TIA do? So TIA is a project under the directorship of five-time convicted felon John Poindexter. Yeah, this is baffling that Poindexter the, the, is back. Good old, I don't the dreaded that. rear admiral, as we like to call him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that just. The, the, I mean, if you're going to do something like this, pick somebody. A little credible. Who didn't lie to Congress, who didn't mislead the president, and so on. So, Mr. Poindexter is in charge of handing out hundreds of millions of dollars to research groups, uh, some private sector, some public sector, some academic, to research a bunch of different things uh, that involve uh, doing better data analysis and response. And most of them are, are, you know, if not innocuous, at least not apocalyptic. But the really scary bit is the data mining. Right. Um, the data mining process is to, uh, works like this. What they want to do is grab a bunch of civilian and military and intelligence agency databases, and they want to go through them looking for patterns that might tip someone off that, that someone's a bad guy, a malefactor, some description, which on its surface sounds pretty good, except there's no oversight, there's no appeal, the databases are secret, the workings of the database are secret. It's basically, imagine the no-fly list where you know you get people who have a name that sounds a little like an alias used by someone who once was suspected of being a terrorist who can never get on an airplane again every time they go to the air airline they say i'm sorry you're not allowed to fly today they go why not and they say we can't tell you it's national security hmm. right this is now uh, going to involve data mining your credit card records. This will involve data mining. So if you happen to buy some combination of goods that's some algorithm somewhere that's not accountable to anyone, that wasn't elected by anyone, that's not subject to oversight by anyone, happen to decide, indicated someone who's about to do something bad, you know, that maybe they look like bomb ingredients, but they could also be ingredients for something you do in your kitchen, all of a sudden you find yourself being denied the right to travel, or you find that you can't get a loan, or you find that you can't get... Are there documented examples of this, though, of somebody showing up in these databases and then... Oh, the no-fly list. There's, there's many, many examples of people. But how do we up. even know? Isn't this a top secret? So there's, there's um, a, an African-American woman who lives in Florida, I believe, who's about 70 years old, oh, yes. who has the same name as an alias of a known terrorist suspect. Uh, we don't actually even know, I think, if he's a terrorist, but, but a, right. sus a suspected terrorist. Um, she can't fly. Yeah, this is a celebrated case, very well known. Yes, yes, and that's just one of many. But I do we know that people be who bought hummus are, and then, uh, are now suddenly being banned from flying? I mean, have we actually seen well, that? Well, no, because TIA is not in, in, in effect yet. So it's supposition that it might happen. It, well, yes, it's, it's, it's supposition that's strong enough that three uh, Congress critters today introduced a bill saying, wait a second. No more data mining until at least Congress has heard what it is you plan to do with the data, right. how your systems are supposed to work, how they're going to be accountable, how people find out whether they're on the list. Imagine a credit reporting agency run by the government that has no consumer rights end of it. So you know how already we, we know in, in credit reporting agencies that because you have a name that's similar to some guy who's a deadbeat, you can find yourself being denied the rental car. You know, right. we, we already know that that happens. This is every credit reporting agency imaginable being run by the government in complete secrecy with your tax dollars and you don't get to have any say in it, you don't get to find out what records have been associated with your name, there's no freedom of information and what's worse is under the USA Patriot Act we know that people can be declared enemy combatants. So one of the things that may happen is you show up at the airport, they say, not only aren't you flying today, but we think you're an enemy combatant, you're going to jail, you don't get a lawyer, you don't get any due process, you don't get a hearing, you know, no one knows where you've been, you've been disappeared. Right? This is, this is maybe the kind of country that, that uh, they were trying to build when John Poindexter was in charge and, and you know, we were mucking around in El Salvador executing nuns, but this is not the kind of country that I want to live in today. Now, you said it's not online yet. Uh, this no. is something they're working this on. This is something they've just got appropriations for and that we're asking people to go online and, and, and say something about 
Um, you know, this is this is something that we want people to go to dub 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 or rather action.eff.org. We've shown that and site before. That's, that's where you right. can sign up and you can send letters and so forth. Action.eff.org. You punch in your zip code. It'll tell you who your Congress critter is, where they stand on this issue. Give you a letter that's already populated that you can revise to your heart's content that you can submit back up to your to your to your lawmaker and say, look, I oppose this. I want to live in an America that's as free as the founders of the Constitution intended it to be. We had John Perry Barlow talking about the Patriot Act on yesterday, and mm -hmm. now this. It really seems like the fear post 911 of terrorist activity has really pushed us in a, in a kind of an anti-liberty uh, direction. Yeah, I don't think that it's so much fear as opportunism. I think that there are some extremely shameful and, and frankly embarrassing people who have an anti-liberty agenda and who have used the tragedy of September 11th to pursue that agenda, who are exploiting the, the death of people to, to uh, pursue an agenda that has nothing to do with stopping terrorism and everything to do with strengthening their power and strengthening their authority and rolling back civil liberties that we spent years defending. Right. Uh, these, people were, these people were calling for, for example, an elimination of the need for a justice to sign a warrant before uh, a cop can read your email long before September 11th. This it's only after September and, yeah, 11th that they, they got want it. it. Yeah. EFF.org. You can read more about That's it. Right. Action.EFF.org to write a letter, letter to your member of Congress. And by the way, as long as we're talking about reading, Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom is out now. This is the book that you wrote, and you're doing an odd thing with it. You're kind of giving it away. You can buy it in the bookstores, but you can also download it from our site and many other sites. That's right. right. Uh, there's Why? A project Why? Called, you're well, giving it away. So, you know, Congress and, and, and uh, the Supreme Court seem to think that rights holders need lots of copyright. Right. More copyright than to we could ever them. use. As much copyright, in fact, as the Disney Corporation thinks it needs, as right. we saw yesterday Mickey. when right. the Supreme Court ruled that right. copyright can just keep on being extended. Well, they said an interesting thing. Forever. They said it might be bad policy, but it is the right of Congress to do it. But it's the right it. of Congress to do it. So Larry Lessig, uh, professor at Stanford and uh, the special master in the Microsoft antitrust case. Had him on case, many, many times. Wonderful brilliant guy. guy yep. member of the EFF board, started a project called uh, the Creative Commons. And the idea is to get creators to give back some of the rights that Congress has given us without us asking Just for to it. see what would happen? Just, well, be, to, to serve the public domain. You know, I couldn't have written this book without the public domain. Domain. Absolutely. This is a book that's that you know draws on ideas from science fiction writers who came before me. Is it novel? Or it's a, a novel, okay. yeah. Set in Walt Disney World, you know, a park that was <laughs> built by someone who came before me. Uh, all of those things came out of the public domain. They're ideas that belong to all of us, and I wanted to give some of the book back to Good people. So I put it online a week ago today. It's been downloaded almost 50,000 times now. That's on a book whose initial print run is less than 10,000 copies. That's awesome. Um, it's leading so you're the happy Amazon to have people charts. reading it regardless of whether you're going to make money on it. Absolutely. Well, but I think I will. It's leading the Amazon charts. It's selling like crazy. Good job. Thank I you like very that. Much. It's the open source novel. Absolutely. All right. Nice. As always, Cory Doctorow on the leading edge, boingboing.net. Right? That's right. That's the blog, EFF.org. That's the official site. And if you want to read more about uh, TIA uh, and uh, what you can do about it, go to our website, thescreensavers.com. And we have a copy of uh, Cory's book there for download.